and we know how much money we've got so we can do it. And it's a lesson. I mean, the, the reason that the US collider, the SSC, failed is because it's the problem you have in the US with the funding system, as you've seen in the last few weeks, yeah. is that it's very arbitrary and it's open to political maneuvering and, and things can be shut down and take the superconducting super collider that was supposed to be in waxahachi texas if i'm saying that right uh was initially proposed in the 1970s uh the u.s department of energy reviewed it through the 80s and i believe they started boring the tunnels around 1987 ish uh congress was initially told it was supposed to cost 4.4 billion dollars you adjust that for inflation in today's dollars it's uh, about 9.6. As typical with government projects, there tends to be a little uh, drift or bloat. And that 4.4 kind of grew into, I think, in the $10 billion range, which means a project that would be $9.6 billion in today's dollars would grow into about a 20 to $25 billion project, which that surprises no one. You can probably suspect there's some current government projects in the $5 billion range that uh, are projecting to inflate if they get approved by Congress. <clears throat> now, I believe what caused some of that inflation was the magnets that were used for the collider. Uh, the reason that the loops get bigger is because it takes a lot of magnetic force and energy to keep to spin a particle because it wants to go off in a straight line. So you make bigger and bigger loops, so it's easier to keep those particles going in a circle. And you have to do two of them. Uh, it's not like you might see just one tube in the collider, but I believe it's two particles that are getting uh, a spun. Uh, and so they spin up one and they spin up the other, and then eventually they col collide or crash them together. So when you have a bigger loop, it takes less powerful magnets, but it takes a lot more magnets. Uh, a smaller loop takes fewer, but it takes more powerful magnets. And if you don't have that uh, technology and magnetic power, then you need bigger and bigger loops. I, I, I'm kind of that's kind of what I gathered from what I've read. Why did they cancel the project? Well, Brian Cox said, well, the Congress took the funding away. But what motivated? Well, there are several things. One was the Soviet Union collapsed, and a lot of American scientific endeavors were driven to compete with the Soviet Union to kind of show them what's up, you know, that we're superior in our scientific endeavors. But the Soviet Union collapse kind of took away that incentive. Another reason was the United States was already committed to the International Space Station project, which was a little bit sexier. Uh, going out into space kind of has a little bit more appeal than just digging holes in the ground and smashing things together that you can't see. Um, space obviously is a little more appealing because anyone can be kind of convinced that there's some uh, a little bit more appeal with space because you can look up at the night sky and just been kind of inspired by it. So I, I imagine that had something to do with it. Also, you had scientists going before Congress arguing that the whole project itself was a called a luxury science was the quote I believe used around it. And it was a really high cost, low output endeavor where they were saying you could take that money, put it into their projects or their research and get some uh, benefits out of it uh, at a shorter uh, return on investment. And finally, I think it was in 1993, uh, we had a $255 billion deficit, budget deficit for the year which I guess was or is a lot of money. It's kind of hard to keep those things in perspective when you have much larger relative terms to consider. But at the time, we were also getting out of the Iraq war, so we had a lot of costs, a lot of expense, and big, expensive, atom-smashing machines doesn't have a lot of appeal. Bill Clinton reluctantly signed the bill that killed it. He did say it was a mistake to do it, uh, Congress, I believe, I, Congress kind of forced his hand, and when he signed it, he said this was a mistake because it was kind of communicating to the international community that United States' commitment to a global scientific endeavor um, was a little flaky, which I guess isn't something you really want to telegraph to people. And, and CERN is not like that. CERN has got a guaranteed stream of funding, small, from each country. And so you can do these projects. And the one in the U.S., that was during the Clinton administration? Is that what it was? 
Uh, yeah, it was close. Was it Clinton? It was closed down for, by Congress on a very slim vote, and it was it was in Texas. So it was mm. it was one of those things where you got states vying for money, and it was half built, mm. and everyone was there, you know. And the thing, it was bigger than the LHC. It was half built, and it was going to be bigger than the LHC on the border uh, between France and Switzerland. By 1993, the SSC in Waxahachie, Texas, Waxa, Waxahachie, Texas. I'm not sure if I'm saying I'm. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It feels good, but not sure. Uh, by 1993, it had 14.6 mile. It had 14.6 miles of the 54.1 miles of tunnel, as well as several buildings. Now, the LHC, which became operational nearly 10 years after the SSC was supposed to be completed, was only 16.7 miles. At bare minimum, it is safe to claim the SSC would have discovered the Higgs particle a full 10 years before the LHC would have been built. However, if the SSC would have been built, the LHC in Europe may, not, may never have been built, and all the scientists would have come to Texas to do their work uh, here in the United States. And it was wow. closed down. So you waste a lot of money. Is that a, a huge disappointment for the scientific community? Like, were people very hopeful that this was going to go live? Yeah, it was being built. Yeah. So they dug half the tunnel. What would it be yeah. able to do that the LHC couldn't do? It was a higher energy accelerator than the LHC. So oh. it would have discovered the Higgs particle first. So what would have the SSC in Texas done that the LHC wouldn't have done? And Brian Cox answered that it would have discovered the Higgs particle first. Now, that isn't really a good answer for me, just being first, even if it's 10 years prior to the LHC or even 20 years. That's not enough of an enticement uh, just to build it bigger to find it first. It took several minutes for him to elaborate on it more, and I'm going to cut that out of sequence with the podcast itself, and I'm going to put that clip in after this as well to have him expand or explain it a little bit better. But a larger collider would have planned for a collision energy of 40 TeV versus LHC's 13 TeV. Now, TeV stands for electron volt. I don't know what an electron volt is, and I don't understand it. All I know is TeV means electron volt. I know it's a unit of measurement of energy, and when you collide things in a super collider, the more electron volts you have, the higher your chances of discovering something in the micro-moment explosion that occurs afterwards. The way I understand it means the larger collider that you have means the larger particle that you can smash. And the larger particle that you can smash means the larger the explosion that's observed afterwards. And the larger the explosion is means the, the more debris or particles that you can potentially discover in the micro moment after that collision. I think. I'm, that's how I read it. And I'm going to link some of these articles down below that I've read to get to this point. So those will be in the description box below. But I'm going to stop there and yield any elaboration or further comments to you guys. If you're more experienced in this field, feel free to put those uh, ideas, uh, maybe, even maybe even tag the time code to what I'm talking about, in your opinion, in the comments below. So we can all kind of share this idea. And I'm going to cut this next clip of about 45 seconds out of sequence with the rest of the podcast to explain what I just said maybe a little bit better and then what I've said maybe filled in some of the gaps as well. Because uh, what I'm trying to do is bridge this gap between someone much more intelligent than I am uh, and then turn it into layman's terms and then explain it better for myself. Because there's a lot of times they glossed over some stuff where I didn't understand it, but I wish I did. One of the things in particle physics is that you want as many collisions per second as you can generate and um the, we have a collision we have a, a what's called a bunch crossing at lhc we can vary it but it's, it's something like 25 nanoseconds depending on what so it's really we get a lot of collisions per second and, and the more collisions per second you can get the more chance you have of making interesting things like higgs particles or whatever else may be out there waiting to be discovered i mean it's, it's possible there are other particles out there that we haven't yet discovered Ooh. that could be within the reach of the lhc and if this one that was in Texas had gotten built and it was more powerful than the, than mm. the LHC, you'd have even more opportunity to do something like that. Yeah. Um, wow. Had it been running. But, but the the half-built part, is it useless now? Or can they I think sort they of recharge it, in, it up yeah. again? No, I think they, they filled, filled it, in, it yeah. in. I think so. Oh. I mean, it was just half a tunnel. So the half-built part, is it useless? 
I think they filled it in. Now, the SSE site sat abandoned for about 20 years. Eventually, it was purchased by a chemical manufacturing company and converted into a facility to create oil field products in the energy industry. Not as exciting as the original intent, but good for that company. Uh, I'm glad you're doing well. The tunnels, based on the latest articles I could find from a couple years ago, were filled in with water. Now, in my Googling, I did find a good America moment. Uh, I found an article from February 2014 that was about some scientists are considering an effort to revive the SSC and make it bigger and bagger than originally intended. Instead of going around Waxahachie, Texas, Waxahachie, Texas, I want to feel like I really wish or hope that is the right pronunciation. Someone tell me if I'm right. They would open up the old tunnels and use them as essentially a warm-up lap to run particles in an accelerator that encircles all of Dallas in a 270-mile loop and have particle collisions around 100 TeV. Now remember, uh, I said the original intent was 40 electron volts and the LHC was at 14 or 15. And I think they did some upgrades that might put it around the 20. So this is still five times greater at a 100 electron volts you know so that <sighs> that's but, the thing it, it you can do these wonderful uh, things for not a lot of money if you just do it over many years and have stable funding yeah and just commit to doing it all right so let's wrap this up uh in all the googling i did to try to fill in some of the gaps or expand on what these guys were saying in the podcast um, i'm still left with the question why look for particles uh, it's not very lucrative or exciting when you initially look at it, uh, same as it was in the early 90s. Looking into space and developing stuff for space is a lot more appealing or more um, sexier, I would say. So why look for particles? So this is what I've kind of concluded in all the Googling and research that I've done. So there's a thing called the standard model. It's a table of known particles. So to me, it seems like the standard model is to particles, the same as the periodic table of elements is to elements. So as they discover particles, they can fill out more details on the standard model and perhaps notice gaps where there ought to be a particle. In these gaps, they can predict or theorize the existence of a particle. The existence of this particle is used to understand how the universe works or understand our reality. I know that's not a great answer, but that's what I've got so far. However, in an article from November 2018, I'll link it in the description and below uh, of November 2018, mystery particle question mark. Uh, there was evidence to suggest the possibility of a new mystery particle. Now, here's where some of you Rogan fans may get interested or m connect some dots. You have probably heard him quote JBS Haldane as saying, quote, that the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, but queerer than we can suppose. That was in 1927. So I assume the word queerer had a little bit different context. So in the article, it states that the standard model will be superseded as we learn more, but not with the current favored candidates, uh, supersymmetry, extra dimensions, and grand unification theories. Although they predict new particles, they don't predict a particle with the properties that were possibly observed, which suggests something so weird that nobody has suggested it yet. Again, the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, but queerer than we can suppose. So that means that what if this mystery particle proves to be in existence, we have no way of explaining how or why. We just know it exists, but we don't have a theory present to explain why, which makes reality uh a lot more loosely grasped than you and I could possibly, or even physicists, like actual smart people, can consider. I want you guys to think about that, that the theories on reality that we have don't actually do it justice. Uh, so I'm going to do another farm video soon. If you guys are interested in that, you can hit the subscribe button. If you would like to see me do another expansion uh, on a podcast, uh, and fill in some gaps, feel free to subscribe and let me know that's what you want to see, and I'll do some more. And uh, if if you are more informed on this topic, uh, I invite you again to go into the comments section and uh, try to expand on it, but put a time code and say, hey, at this moment, 
this is where you're wrong and this is why. And so we can all kind of follow along. Appreciate it. Have a good one. And uh, I'll see you whenever I do another video, which I can't promise when that's going to be, but sometime. I would like to do it every week, but uh, presently the schedule is a little busy.